here we go. So first of all, uh, well, thank you for to the, to the sponsors of, uh, of this event, IKB, Quaternium, and Define for, uh, for inviting me, having me here. It's, uh, it's an honor. It's also a bit scary to do the keynote, but it's mostly an honor. <laughs> and uh, secondly, well, I uh, also have to thank my, com my, the, my, my employer, Stotpro, for uh, letting me come here these two days. And uh, if you want to thank them too, you can go to the, uh, at that address at the side and find out what that big red R means. means. Uh, if you're interested, you can just contact them and they will uh, unleash an army of saves upon your banks. And, uh, and, uh, <coughs> and, and they'll, be, they'll be happy to do it. Okay, just a couple of words about me. Uh, you, well, you know of my involvement with, uh, with Quantlib. What you might or might not know is that uh, I also have uh, a blog on Quantlib since a few months. Uh, I'm writing about the architecture of the library on that, uh, on that blog. There are a number of ways, well, you can, uh, if you don't remember the address, you can just Google me or, or something. There are a number of ways to, to be notified when, uh, when I publish new posts. Uh, one of the ways is uh, my Twitter handle, this one, Elba Labio. Speaking of which, uh, I haven't been on, uh, I haven't been for much, for, for, uh, for a long time on Twitter, but I came to appreciate uh, that uh, it's, it's, uh, it, start, it started to be a, a nice way to follow conferences uh, or uh, events, even if you're not there. Basically, what happens is uh, people going at, attending a conference. Well, for instance, uh, you had, uh, I don't know if you, if you know it, uh, you had a, a, a big C++ conference here in Dusseldorf last week, uh, a European one. What happens is people attending the conference, uh, well, basically just tweets uh, well, particular points that the speaker make uh, or uh, particular things happening or whatever. It's just, uh, it, it works basically since, uh, as some kind of collective uh, note, uh, note taking. I mean, so, provide, given that uh, people mark their tweets with, uh, with uh, the, a particular hashtag for the conference, was MCPP for this one because it was called the meeting CPP or whatever, then it, it's possible later to, to look for, for the hashtag and, and see basically the notes taken this way by, by the people of the conference. <coughs> so I will be trying to do this uh, during the, the, the other talks. Uh, well, if you want, uh, if you have a Twitter account and want to, to try this uh, well, I'm the, the first to speak, so I get to choose the, the hashtag. Eh? So I'm proposing this one, Quantlib Workshop 13, QLWS 14. If you want to try the experiment, well, take your phone out and, and tweet away. Okay, at this point, having given you permission to take out your phones, uh, I have to grab your attention and keep it, because otherwise, no, well, I don't think you're going to check Facebook or whatever because, well, you're mostly Germans, uh, so you're, you're, you're professionals. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I thought I needed a, a, some kind of attention-grabbing title for the talk, so this is what uh, I came up with. <laughs> well, of course, it's not actually true. This is more sensationalistic than, uh, than uh, <laughs> I usually than I usually do. But uh, well, what I mean with this is... Uh, well, of course, I do like Quantlib. Uh, still, uh, there are things in the library that, uh, that bug me, things that uh, I wish we had done differently, or uh, things that uh, every time I, I, I look at them, I say, why? <laughs> For goodness sake. So, well, actually, the, the title might, well, a, a more realistic title might be this one, or even better. Okay, there is uh, these things uh, in the library. Some things uh, we, can't, uh, we can't fix uh, right now because uh, since release 1.0, we chose to keep backward compatibility so, so that uh, people's code based on Quantlib doesn't, doesn't break from one, uh, one release to the other. How about uh, uh, future releases? How about uh, what uh, this? So I'm going to throw out some ideas uh, about what we could do 
in a future, let's say, Quantly 2.0 release, uh, where we to to where if if we were free to to change something in the architecture and uh, and try to fix uh, the the more uh, blatant um, problems in the library. So this might be the the actual title of the thing, but well, I just couldn't resist using this one. It was too good as a title, so <laughs> that was the first one. Okay, so the question you might have is, uh, okay, you're, uh, if, uh, if, uh, you, if there are these things you, you don't like, I mean, you, these things you dislike so much, why are they in the library to begin with? Well, as usual, like most things, they, they seemed like good ideas at the time. At the time meaning that the, the era when we started Quantly was 2000, so we were vastly inexperienced. I mean, looking back, uh, I've been looking back at some of the code you, uh, we, we wrote at the time, uh, uh, and <laughs> it, was, it was kind of a shock sometimes. We were widely experienced. Well, we, I, I, still, uh, I still have bad ideas daily. I mean, just, you can just ask my wife about that, and uh, she's going to confirm that. But uh, we were, uh, at that time, uh, well, it, we did uh, what, what we thought was, was uh, correct, or we, we started uh, with some design, started to improve it, and then uh, at some point it kind of crystallized. Anyway, I'm going to show in, in, uh, in a bit uh, how this uh, this came to be, which will I hope will explain some of the, the things that I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll show later. Well, anyway, Quantly starts in 2000. This uh, is uh, the text of the, the, the announcement we sent out when we started the project. Well, it's not, of course, uh, an actual screenshot from, uh, from uh, that time. Well, almost, because it's on SourceForge, so SourceForge still looks like it's the 90s or 2000s. So it uh, looks a bit like, uh, like that. And uh, as I said, I looked back at the, to prepare this talk, I looked back at the code. I, I, I checked out the, the subversion repository, we, the first version from the repository, I looked at them, and uh, it looked like, like uh, ancient history sometime. I mean, the technology at the time was uh, something like this. We had the, the two major compilers uh, on the, the Windows and Linux side were Visual C++ 6, uh, GCC 2.95. Visual C++ 6 was, uh, I think, nowadays I think is, is regarded as a, a vastly non-standard compliant Compiler. It was it was full of uh, Microsoft only extensions and stuff. GCC point nine two ninety five is also also kind of well uh, an old version. I think it was uh, shortly after uh, there was a well there was a, at some point there was a fork in GCC and then I think this version was uh, shortly after the fork was merged back into into the original one. <coughs> version control was CVS. Which uh, uh, well, it was the the, the the frontier at the time, and uh, the standard committee for C++ had just uh, uh, published the, the C++ 98 standard, which was the first standard for the language. The compilers were still not compliant with the standard. Some of them took years to get uh, that to get to, to compliance. I remember looking, uh, I, I didn't remember that, looking at the uh, old code now, it was littered with, uh, it was full with macros, uh, just for compatibility, just because uh, syntax that would work in one compiler wouldn't work uh, in uh, another one, and vice versa. So we had to, to write all the switch behind, switches behind macros and stuff. So as for technology, well, as I said, was kind of ancient history. But it's not really this uh, looking back at these compilers that uh, brought that drove to me the point of uh, how much things have changed. It was more uh, looking at what happened uh, outside uh, technology. Well, as for me, this was 2000. This is Marco. He's my first kid. In 2000, well, he was born in November 2000. So this is just this was just the well. I think. He, maybe 
he and Quant have a one month difference or something. Well, it was not uh, intentional, but just so happened. So this is 2000, and well, this is 2014. Marco is the one on the right, of course. Uh, he is choosing what high school to, to frequent next year at this time. He's, he's about to change his voices. He has his first hint of facial airs somewhere in the. So, well, it's, it's, uh, it's a lifetime, right? And uh, also in technology, things changed a lot, right? Now we have Visual C12, this is C4.8. All of them are highly standard compliant. I mean, they, they both uh, implement uh, most, if not all, of the C11 standard. They, are they also implement uh, some parts of, uh, sometimes most of C14 standard. So we are uh, in the situation on, on the C side is vastly better. Version control is, uh, well, we use the subversion after CUS and then we change that too and uh, we are on, on uh, Git on which I'll have more to, to, to say later. And uh, as for us, we are supporting most of the changes. We now, Quantlib now supports Visual C++ for se from version 7 to 11. We are supporting any recent uh, version of GCC, I mean in the past uh, five, six, seven years, I think. We are using Git since this year. I'm enthusiastic about it. Uh, and, uh, well, we are still, uh, <coughs> we are still on, uh, well, not really of C++ 98. There was a C++ 03 in the meantime, but it was just uh, a slight revision of C++ 98. We, we're still not using any of the C++ 11 or C++ 14 features. That's just for, uh, for standard compatibility. For uh, sorry, for backward compatibility, as I said. So we are uh, supporting most of the new technology. Still, uh, looking at the changes uh, we we had at the evolution of Quantlib, uh, I realized that uh, most of the changes in architecture happened uh, relatively early in the history of Quantlib. And uh, well, I went through the the various versions to in. in uh, I spent a couple of nights back in, in memory lane, looking at uh, back, uh, checking out old versions <coughs> and looking at changes. Uh, it was nice. Well, basically, the first version, version 011, was in uh, November 2000. About uh, 100 classes, uh, 10,000 lines of code. Uh, well, it was uh, there wasn't very much in there. It was just the, the beginning of the architecture. Well, I'm going to have uh, some uh, somewhat casual approach to UML here, I mean, it's, uh, as, uh, I will uh, somewhat, somewhat color code the classes. For instance, I'm going to, to, to just for, for, for uh, ease of uh, spotting them, uh, I'm using yellow for interfaces, uh, well, <coughs> interfaces as in abstract based classes, uh, blue for classes implementing them, uh, green for patterns, uh, those uh, brown classes at, at, the, at the bottom are smaller. Uh, data type classes such as data and, and this kind of stuff uh, with, without much behavior. And uh, I'm using that uh, sickly purple for, for, for the stinkers, uh, I mean, for, for the bad ideas that uh, we had in the, in the library. So when we began, we had just uh, the beginning of the turn structure class. Uh, at that time, turn structure meant uh, interest rate turn structure, nothing else. We had uh, some, uh, some uh, utility classes, uh, dates, calendars, and, uh, and, and the like. We had just, uh, uh, I think, uh, one actual instrument. It was a European option, uh, priced, I think, with uh, analytic formula or finite differences. We had, I didn't remember that, we, all, we actually had uh, the observer, observable pattern in, uh, in the first version. We didn't use it much, though. And uh, we had an instrument class which was, uh, well, terrible, simply terrible. We basically, instead of uh, having an abstract interface, we coded in there all the behavior that uh, we thought it might be needed, like uh, whether or not if I had uh, an, interest, an underlying interest and structure or swap volatility or whatever. 
It was, uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, no, I, I won't go into detail, it's just too painful uh, to, 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 <laughs> to remember that. But, well, this was the first version. Then we started, uh, we started making some first slow changes. In January, we had the first Monte Carlo pressure and the beginning of the Monte Carlo framework. The first version was Windows only. In general, we had the first Linux port, so we were able to compile and run the library on and uh, use the library in Linux. In February, we had the first uh, n dimensional Monte Carlo. In uh, March, I, I found out about this, this uh, well, what Ruby, which at the time was a little known language from, from Japan. It was uh, nowhere as famous as it is today, and uh, I exported quantly to Ruby previously in the first version was just exported to Python and uh, uh, okay next change uh, look closely or you're gonna miss it instrument uh, was no longer an observer well I don't remember the, the actual line of reasoning in the in the version control logs uh, we say that well we're not using the observer feature so let's just simplify the thing so basically Observe that the pattern was still in the library. It wasn't used uh, anywhere any longer, basically. Then uh, we introduced in May the first uh, piecewise curve uh, on deposits only. We didn't have uh, support for swaps yet. Uh, well, anyway, and uh, in May we released version 1.9. After this one, uh, things started to get, uh, to get better we start to introduce uh, uh, new ideas and uh, the, the shape of the library starts uh, mm, getting more similar to, to what it is today. First of all, we gave uh, a same interface to instrument, uh, so it's similar to what we have now. We have the method for, just method for asking the, the, the value, whether or not it's expired. Uh, and uh, we had in place the mechanism that uh, uh, is still there today of uh, caching the value and just recalculating it if, uh, uh, if needed. Then uh, we introduced the, the relinkable handle class, uh, which is still used today. Before we had uh, something called the handle, but it was not uh, the handle, today's handle. Well, basically, at, in the first version of the library, well, in, the, in several versions of the library, we weren't using Boost yet. Uh, so we weren't using Boost uh, uh, smart pointers either. We had uh, one, uh, one uh, smart pointer we made ourselves that was called Handle. Relinkable Handle is uh, what uh, the Handle is today, that is uh, the, the smart equivalent of a pointer to pointer. Then uh, we extend uh, the curve bootstrap, so we, we have an interface for rate helper, and uh, based on that, uh, we are able to, to bootstrap curves on deposit and swaps. And then we made the instrument an observer again. We added uh, in July, we added the market element class. This is the class that nowadays is called quote, so it's the concept of some some value coming from the market that might change might change and might be observed by other classes so that they can recalculate if uh, if the value changes then uh, in September we released version 0.2 then uh, in October we introduced the option engine class this, uh, as, a, as a concept, uh, is uh, basically what uh, uh, is, is, is the, the beginning of uh, what came to be the, the pricing engine class later. In this, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, version, at this time, it was just used for, uh, for, uh, for options, for vanilla options, European option basically. So we had the first engine, for the analytic one for, uh, for European options, and uh, we started having the, the beginning of the the structure we have today, and uh, well, we uh, used the market element class to represent quotes, to represent uh, interest, quoted interest rates. So now we had in place the mechanism to observe uh, 
when the rates changed and boost up the curve again. And uh, uh, finally, we started using the pimple idiom for calendars. They counter, uh, well, this made, uh, made uh, the, the, the feel of the library more like it is today, meaning that uh, nowadays, uh, if we have to pass a calendar to some function or some class, we just pass a calendar instance. Before this, this change, to preserve the, the polymorph polymorphic behavior, we had to pass a smart pointer to, to the calendar which made for more verbose uh, declarations and, uh, and stuff. This simplified things a bit. So here we are in November 2001. That's just one year after the first version of the library. And most of the ideas uh, are, are there. I mean, they have to, they, they need more time to, to, to get to the present form. Uh, we'll see it in a minute, but still most of the ideas are, are there already and uh, it's, uh, well, 12 years ago. And this was version 021, November 2001. What happens next is, uh, well, in May we released version 3, then we had, uh, we, we renamed the option engine class. So we call it <laughs> pricing engine because we realized it could be used for more than just uh, more instrument than just the option could be a general uh, a general mechanism, and this goes into version of three one. Uh, then finally, the engine machinery, the whole machinery moves uh, into the the instrument class. So now the the base instrument class has uh, a link uh, to a pressure engine and uh, has the interface that uh, for setting up the arguments, fetching the results, and and stuff. I mean, it, it's the the interface it still has. It still uh, has today, and this goes into version 034. It's November 2003. It was well now that the changes were were more slow. So now it's uh, three years after the the first version, and basically the architecture is uh, is there. The only things missing, sadly, are uh, the 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 some of the bad ideas. So in uh, August uh, we introduced the singleton class uh, and uh, in September the, the settings class uh, and uh, the global evaluation date that's going to, to cause us some problems in the long term. Well, at the time, it's, as I said, at the time seemed like a good idea. For one thing, it uh, helped us uh, solve some, some problems with, uh, well, basically, uh, it's a uh, avoided having to pass the evaluation date uh, everywhere or setting it to, to curves and not, not being able to change it afterwards. Uh, well, at, at the same time, we had that uh, differentiation between uh, the Hilton structure class, uh, for example, that uh, in which we wrote the, the, the behavior specific to interest rate and the base term structure class, where we were finally able to write uh, the behavior r related to, as I say, the evaluation date of uh, uh, the behavior that allows, for instance, a curve to move uh, if the, the evaluation date changes, uh, this kind of stuff. So, well, there, w there were reasons for introducing that class because uh, it solved uh, a few problems. As I said, uh, it, uh, it came back uh, to, to give us... Uh, problems in the in the long term okay so this is uh, and I think this is right December 2004 version 038 quantly basically is uh, what it is today there were some changes but not uh, not uh, relevant ones in the architecture so what uh, what are the problems I mentioned in, the, this, uh, in this architecture? Well, I have, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, three of them uh, during this talk. First one, banner number one. The first one, well, it's kind of obvious uh, after a while when you use the library. Actually, it's, uh, it's, uh, so, it's, it's, uh, I mean, it's so well known that even, even Bob Dylan wrote about it. Of course, I'm referring to to the, the, the broken frets part of the of the song. Quantlib is not uh, 
suitable for, for multi-threading at this time, unless, uh, unless you're very careful and uh, keep uh, objects well separated, but still, uh, still uh, you st it's, it's, it's not, uh, it's not uh, I mean, it uh, it's, uh, feels like uh, fighting against the library, okay, right, because, and, uh, well, there is, uh, for instance, a couple of, uh, just a couple of examples, Let's say you have multiple options on the same underline. It would be natural to use the same uh, process to describe their, their behavior and to use the same engine to, to price them. Well, you can use the same engine to price them right now in the library as long as you price them one at a time. You can't uh, price them uh, on, uh, on uh, parallel threads because all of them are going to try to write uh, in, in, and read from the same argument and results instances. So they're going to step onto each other's toes. All the instruments and the curves and whatever depend on the same settings instance. Well, that, they're, they're just one instance of the class. So you want to price the same instrument uh, in parallel on, on multiple dates to see how, it, uh, how the price changes. You can't. You can do it uh, one date at a time, not uh, not in parallel. Again, I mean the, the the current alternatives are well either you stay single threaded, you do one thing after the next, or uh, you use multiple processes. In that ca in that uh, in that case, there is no problem of uh, of uh, threads interfering. But of course, uh, you have. Uh, uh, other problems like uh, communicating between processes and this kind of uh, all these kind of uh, of, uh, of uh, coordination. Well, given uh, these two are the, the only answers, is not uh, surprised that uh, the, the, the response to the current state is uh, well not really sympathetic, usually. And uh, well, I can understand this because, uh, mm, as I said, one. Uh, that when we started uh, when we started the library, it was uh, in a way it was a different uh, um, a different computing environment. We were still uh, Moore's law was still working. Processors were getting faster and faster each uh, each uh, each year. Most machines were single <coughs> single processor, and uh, well, what happens is in uh, 2005. This ch and uh, well, this changes. Herb Sutter publishes uh, a, a paper on Dr. Duff's journal called "The Free Lunch Is Over," and uh, he, wrote, he writes about uh, a, a trend that was uh, already something that was already beginning. Basically, well, he, he publishes this this graph. Uh, the green line is the number of chips uh, per uh, per uh, the number of transistors per chip. Sorry, and th that that keeps uh, keeps growing. I mean. This is the graphic that uh, he, uh, he updated uh, a few years ago. The number has kept growing. What stopped growing is uh, the blue line, the dark blue line, which is clock speed. As you might remember, at some point, we hit a plateau. The processors kept, uh, well, the, 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 the manufacturer, the manufacturer processor got uh, at the, 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 well, basically the physical limit or, or the economic limit or, or on increasing speed. What happened is, uh, what happened was computers started, uh, while well, processors stayed at the same speed, we started using dual core and quadruple core processors, so multiple cores in the machine. Problem is, uh, all those cores are not good uh, if you just use uh, one of them, as you're forced to do on, on quantity, well, unless you go multi process. Also, you might have other problems, even if you stay single process. For instance, uh, Quantlib is exported to a number of other languages now. For some of them, C Sharp or Java, even if you stay, even if you write a single thread, if you perform your calculations on the one single thread, <coughs> well, what happens is uh, there is always another thread, which basically is garbage collector collection. In Java and C Sharp, it runs in a parallel thread and uh, can 
get back to you and bite you in ways, in unexpected ways. One such example was, uh, well, I remember we, uh, it took a while to, to debug. It was found and debugged by, by one Henner hack. Well, basically, he was using uh, Quantlib from, uh, uh, I don't remember if it was C Sharp or Java, well, one of those two languages, to price interest rate swaps. And uh, every once in a while, his program would just crash. No exception, no, just <coughs> segmentation fault and, and, and the crash. He found out uh, it was an interaction with garbage collection. What was happening? Well, let's, uh, um, what, uh, the, the, the structure of the observer class is uh, you have the, the base class, uh, it declares an update method, which is called uh, when, the, when uh, a notification is, uh, arrives. The method, though, is not implemented in the base class because, well, that's the, the, the behavior it should implement is specific to the, to the specific derived class, so it's, uh, it's uh, in uh, each of the classes inherited from, from observer. So how, how is an observer built? Uh, well, taking some license with the C++ memory model and the UML and whatever, Let's, it's, it's, uh, you can f mm, model it as something like a, a core given by the base class where some of the behavior is implemented and uh, an outer layer given by the derived class. When you build an instance of right helper, for instance, first the base class constructor is called and builds the core and then you go to the right classes and you build the outer layer. So what happens when one of those is destroyed? Let's, let's uh, say you have uh, an observable, the green uh, dot, and the number of observers linked to, registered to, the, observer, to the, the, the observable. When you destroy one of those, what happens is first the derived class constructor, the uh, destructor, sorry, is called, <laughs> and basically strips away the, the outer layer. Then, at this point, uh, the, the, the observer is still registered with the observable because then uh, the base class destructor is called and it's in the base class destructor that uh, unregistered with is called. At this point, uh, the observer gets exits the, the chain of observers linked to the, to the observable and finally, when the destructor is over, gets completely destroyed. So this is what happens when one observer is destroyed. What happens uh, when uh, an observable changes in any way? Well, basically, it fires notification to each of the observers, which means that, that the update method is called on one of the observers in turn. Now, what happens if uh, these two things, uh, destruction of uh, one observer and uh, notification, from the observable happen at the same time because, well, one, the destruction happens on the garbage collection thread and uh, for, an, for any reason the notification happens in our calculation thread. Well, the observable starts the notifications, notifies the first, the third, in the meantime, the observable is being destroyed and at the same point it may happen that this outer layer is, is destroyed. At that point, the observer, the observable, calls update on the, on the observer, which at that point is just the naked base class part and no longer implements update. Update is pure virtual at this point. This is just, the, 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 this doesn't raise an exception, it just terminates the, prob the program with, with a segmentation fault. So it's, it's uh, basically game over for your program and uh, in, in this situation basically game <coughs> over for uh, the possibility of using uh, Quantlib in any serious way from, from those languages. Seems like we are done. Fortunately, well, there is hope. The geek among you can imagine this as said by Obi-Wan Kenobi or son. He was our only hope. No, another there is. That was Yoda. I make a very bad impression, though. <laughs> anyway, there is hope. Eh? 
is not in the library, in the main library yet, but uh, during this last year, we had the two contribution, two contribution which, well, they are not yet in the main library, but anyway, they both address this, uh, this uh, trade safety, safety problem. One, uh, well, doesn't fix, uh, doesn't fix uh, this, this uh, garbage collection thing, but helps. Uh, is from Ricardo Guetta. He used uh, the boost thread library to implement, uh, uh, to change the singleton class so that it can be made uh, thread local, which means each, uh, instead of having one instance of a singleton class for the whole program, you can have one instance per thread, which means, which uh, allows you to, to do a number of things you, you can't usually. Well, I mean, with the current version of the library, Another contribution is from uh, our very own Klaus, uh, which uh, re-implemented Observer and Observable using uh, the, boot signal, uh, uh, the boot signal library. This makes it thread safe. Uh, well, this uh, and his implementation makes it thread safe, so this uh, avoids uh, the problem I just described uh, and makes, makes it possible to use Quantlib from uh, garbage collected uh, languages. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I, have it, I haven't had the time yet to, to, to look closely at Klaus, at Klaus code and, uh, and uh, possibly merge it into the library. And well, I'm kind of excited about it. I mean, is, is it backward compatible? I mean, the interface is the same. No. Uh, it's, it's, it's my opinion. It's ugly. I won't put it in the library. Ah, okay. So I think it needs some adjustments. Okay, so needs so some adjustment. Okay, but anyway, uh, if you want to try it, the good news is uh, you can. It's available now because, uh, well, basically it's on the on the class fork of of Quantlib on on, on GitHub. This uh, GitHub is going to 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 come back in the talk. I mean, I'm I'm. I'm uh, Enthusiastic about this, the switch we made. Uh, it made possible a number of things that uh, makes it really easier to, to improve the library. Anyway, if you want, just surf over to, to Klaus' uh, repository and, and download it, and you can try it. You can try it. Well, this said, uh, I mentioned I would talk about, uh, uh, I would put out there a few ideas um, about uh, uh, how, to, how to improve the design of the library so that some problems are, are uh, avoided. Well, so is there any possibility to, to change the, 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 well, basically in this case, the, the, the mostly the settings class and the singleton classes and uh, state uh, shared everywhere in the library so that uh, it becomes easier well I would set it for possible but easier to, to use it in a multi threaded setting well one possibility for improvement of course is the settings class and in general the singleton classes but uh, mostly the settings class at this time it's a singleton so private constructor an instance uh, method that uh, th through which one retrieves the, the, the one and only instance of this class and all the instruments depend on, on that one instance. Well, one, uh, one possible way to change this, uh, this, uh, to change this uh, could be, well, to make it uh, a, a normal class. I mean, public constructor we could have the possibility to have more than one instance. I mean, you could create how, however many instances you, you'd like, and each instrument could have uh, his, his own one. At this point, settings is possibly not the, 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 no longer the correct name for this, because, well, when you say settings, uh, you, think some, you think of something at, at an application level. A better name might be, might be context, for instance. You might have diff different instruments, might be priced on different contexts, or if you like, uh, you might even price several instruments 
on the same context, but still you would be free to, to choose, to, to group the instrument <coughs> that you want grouped and to keep the other separated. So this uh, would make it possible to do, well, as I just said, to price some instruments on, uh, on one date, uh, some instruments on, uh, on another. To, we, we could have, uh, well, ca a a any kind of, of, of uh, configuration that are not possible now. So this uh, looks, uh, well, on paper, or on screen in this case, it looks good. Unfortunately, it, it, uh, it, uh, this also has problems. And, and, uh, and uh, at this time, uh, uh, well, we, we, might, we might discuss it tomorrow in the, in, the, in the panel we'll have, but at this time I'm, I'm going to, to, to sketch some, some, uh, some <coughs> possible uh, solutions, but uh, none of them uh, really, really convinced me. So we'll see what... Uh, well, basically the problem is, let's say we have two instruments, let's say two interest rate swaps on different contexts. So you want to price them because, uh, well, maybe on different dates or, or whatever. Still, uh, if the swaps uh, are uh, in the same currency or uh, uh, you, you might be, you might expect, uh, well, let's say we might even have two different engines. Still, uh, if they're in the same currency, you might expect uh, to be able to price them on the, on the same discount curve, discounting curve, for instance. Well, this uh, is, uh, is already a problem because uh, if you want to use the same discounting curve for both, you have the problem that your context uh, and in particular the evaluation date has to go to the curve because the curve might, by, well, might depend on that. We have uh, the, the reference date of the curve might depend on the evaluation date. So we need a way. First, we need a way to, to get the context from the instrument to the pricing engine. This can be done in a number of ways. We could change the interface of the engine so that the, the context is passed when we calculate, or we could uh, give the, the engine a link to the instrument so it could retrieve the context. Well, th there are many ways we can do it. For the time being, let's just assume that uh, the engine has the context available. The problem is how do I manage to use this context uh, with, uh, with the curve? One possibility is I give the con I set the context to the discount curve. So when I calculate, uh, first uh, I tell the discount curve that I'm going to use this, con this, this context and then I perform the calculations. Do you see the problem in this approach? Not very really safe, exactly you're going to have raised conditions because, uh, well, if you, you try to do it for two instruments on two different threads, uh, they are going to, to, to set different contexts uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the discount curve and uh, all kinds of funny things uh, will happen and not funny in the ha-ha sense, uh, funny in the <coughs> strange and unwanted sense. Another possibility might be to change the interface of the curve so that uh, the, the, the methods take the context. This uh, would be a move uh, towards a more, a more functional style of programming, which, uh, well, it's basically... Uh, the, the functional style is, is uh, naturally more thread safe because uh, well, you, do, you don't keep state, instead you, you pass, you pass, you tend to pass it. When calculating, so you would... Uh, change, uh, basically change the interface of the function you use so that you, you don't store the context but you pass it to the curve. However, this also has problems. For instance, uh, it breaks uh, laziness. If you have one curve, you can, in this way, you can no longer bootstrap a curve and then use it. Because if you pass a different context, uh, you have to bootstrap it again. Or you might have to bootstrap it again. And if another thread resets a different context, yet again you have to, to, to redo it. It's not, uh, it's, it's, uh, not uh, going to work uh, with, uh, with our, uh, our uh, more, more uh, dynamic curves, the bootstrap one. Also, it's not uh, very nice as an interface, I mean, having to pass the, the whole context uh, at each call. 
yet another possibility we could take uh, our curve and uh, get uh, the engine could make a clone of the curve uh, based on the context it's using and then we could use the clone curve uh, to to to, to, to perform the calculations uh, well this also unfortunately has problems because well for one thing it's uh, every new curve uh, to to support the cloning operation because every new derived curve including the ones that uh, you might have defined uh, which are not in the in the library should uh, be modified to to perform to, to, to add the, the clone method and also this uh, might be wasteful uh, when if you're not using uh, I mean if you're uh, mm, single threading for instance you might not want to do the clone because well your curve that you have is, is okay already so it might be wasteful in some cases still uh, this uh, seems to be the, the, the I mean this is more, more uh, usable than the, the other two choices however this uh, still uh, has problems this uh, works uh, for uh, for the discount curve uh, because the engine knows about it I mean the engine has the, the, the discount curve and, uh, and manages it but let's say I mean that might not be the whole the whole story let's say both these interstate swaps uh, pay six months per river for the on the floating leg you might expect to be able uh, to use the same index instance, I mean, you, and the, the one forecasting curve you have for the six month river. This is a showstopper because, well, the engine has uh, no idea to, to, in order to, to get to that turn structure, the engine should go into the swap, examine each cash flow, and find out what kind of cash flow they are and uh, what kind of curve they're using, which is not just not. Uh, not doable. I mean, this just uh, is, is just a showstopper for uh, for this uh, for this. So at this time, uh, I think the I mean the the only way <coughs> I see that the, this context different context thing can work is simply to duplicate your uh, your curves uh, to have different instances for different contexts. Uh, but this, of course, requires. Uh, requires more management because uh, if you have uh, multiple contexts uh, you need uh, multiple multiple copies of your uh, discounting curves your library curves your whatever you're using so well I don't have a, a, a solution in mind for well I, I have some these those were the, 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 the vague ideas I had for at least uh, well at least a, a possible direction we could go but uh, I don't have the clear solution, mostly because, well, we have two, two different, two competing uh, uh, things we're trying. On the, one, on the one hand, in order to do multi-threading, we want to avoid state uh, whenever it's possible. I mean, the less we have to do with state, uh, the better, which, by the way, is a, is a sentiment which is shared by most people in Italy right now. But uh, uh, on the other hand, we want to use state uh, to cache calculation results and uh, avoid performing more calculation than, than is needed. I don't know how to reconcile those two at the time. Well, uh, we'll see. We'll see if, if uh, anybody comes out for, with, uh, with any other ideas. Okay. Another thing I mentioned is the problem we have with uh, pricing engines. At this point, at this time, if uh, we want to use the same engine for multiple instruments, the problem is they are both going to read and write the same arguments and result instances. So again, we have a shared state, uh, we can't uh, multi-thread. In this case, uh, well, it might be easier to, to modify the architecture so that this works. So instead of calling the calculate methods with no arguments and uh, returning no results, just using arguments and result instances to, to perform uh, arguments and results passing, we might change it so that the instrument passes an arguments instance 
to the method and the method returns a return instance. In this case, the, sh the state wouldn't be shared. It would be able to, it would be possible, sorry, to use the same engine for a parallel, for, for a, um, several calculations at the same time because uh, they would all uh, be reading and writing from different instances. So this might be an easier modification to make. In fact, uh, we could even simplify the design further because, well, once uh, you're having uh, something passed to the calculate method, we might as well elim eliminate the middleman and just uh, pass the instrument itself to the pressing engine. And the pressing engine could get from the instrument the information <coughs> that uh, that uh, is needed for to perform the calculation. I'm not really sure about this because there are more and more uh, complex cases in the in the library currently. For instance, let's say we want to to, to use uh, uh, to, to price a swaption. We might uh, it might happen that the swaption engine has uh, needs some results from the underlying swap, so it needs. Uh, Inside this calculate method, it, uh, it uses an instance of a, of a swap engine. In this case, this would mean that the swaption should be able to give us a swap instance, which uh, well might be kind of heavy to, to create uh, during calculation if it's not already available. In this case, might be maybe easier to still use the argument structure and just uh, create a small argument structure containing the swap arguments and pass it to the engine. Um, I don't know, we should uh, try this experiment uh, in some way and, uh, and see if, uh, if this, uh, uh, if, uh, and see which one of the, the designs is, uh, is better. Well, we, we will uh, we'll need, uh, well, we'll need some feedback uh, to, on, uh, on whether this works or not. So this was about uh, multi-threading and state. Bummer number two. Sometimes, uh, well, looking at some of the classes of the library, well, as for, uh, as for the, abst the abstractions we have, uh, I mean, the base classes, instrument, term structure, stochastic process, those are, are, are mostly fine. I mean, the interfaces are mostly mm, economical, they are, they are clean, it's um, I'm satisfied enough with, with most of those. Sometimes uh, implementations of the interfaces, that is the derived classes inheriting from those classes, are uh, less clean. Sometimes the, 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 the abstraction are, are, I mean, they, they implement the abstraction in a, in a inefficient way. Sometimes the abstraction leaks somewhere. One such example is the Plexos process class. Well, it, uh, uh, you're probably familiar with it. Basically, it contains uh, the, the time, time structures and, uh, and the market data that describe uh, the, the, the dynamics of the, the underlying stock or index or whatever, basically the volatility, the spot price, uh, the time structures for the interest rate and structures for the risk free rate uh, and the dividend deal, if any. Anyway, it contains all those it inherits from stochastic process. The point is, stochastic process is, uh, is as, an abstract, as a base class, as an abstraction, is, uh, was, uh, uh, was meant for uh, mostly for Monte Carlo simulations. Okay. What uh, its interface is, uh, is uh, declared so that uh, at each point uh, in, uh, in a simulation of Monte Carlo, we, c we can call the evolved method of the process and get uh, a simulated value for the next point in the path. And then we call it again and again, and we simulated the, the whole thing. Well, problem, when, when this uh, stochastic process is implemented as, a, as a, in black shows process, we have a, a, a couple of uh, problems. Well, not big ones, but they kind of bug me. One thing is, uh, this is rather inefficient because at each step in the path we are calculating or recalculating the, the drift and the diffusion on the, in the, on the process by asking 
the term structures and the, the code for, for the values. And we rescue them again and again, possibly at the same time, because we are simulating multiple paths. And uh, if we are uh, asking, for instance, the risk-free rate for the forward uh, between those two, those two points, we are going through layer and layers and layers of virtual functions that uh, the compiler can't inline and can't optimize and that possibly use other classes yet. This at each step uh, in the path. I mean, the, so our Monte Carlo simulations are, are notoriously slow right now in the library, and this is one of the of the reasons. So this is one thing. The other, on the other side, on the other hand, uh, Black Scholes process sometimes is used not in Monte Carlo simulation. Sometimes is used just as a way to pass. Uh, the risk-free rate, the volatility, or whatever for a, given, uh, for a given underlying. So, for instance, analytic European engine takes a black Scholes process as an input, but not as a stochastic process, because this engine is not going to use uh, the stochastic process interface at all. It just uses the interface, the, derived, the interface of the derived class, the specific interface of black Scholes process, just to retrieve uh, the curves, the volatility, and the spot price to... to to input into the formulas. So here, uh, the, 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 the abstraction is, is, uh, is leaking in some way. I mean, we are, uh, the idea of the abstraction is we implement a stochastic process, we instantiate a stochastic process, and then we use it uh, without uh, worrying what particular kind of uh, process it is. This uh, breaks the abstraction. How can we, how could we change this. Well, one idea comes from uh, other classes which are already, already, already in the library. For instance, the, the Heston process, I think it was you that uh, wrote the, the, this one, right? Uh, I mean, I, I'm not saying it in, in a bad way. I mean, it's <laughs> I'm going to use it as a useful step, so it's, it's okay. <laughs> so it's a uh, class class. And, uh, okay, Aston process is similar to Black Scholes process. It's, it has the same problem. It, has, it, it, uh, it uh, contains the, the, the term structures on the quote and, and whatever. The, the further step here is that we also have a, a corresponding Aston model class, which is used elsewhere and, uh, well, it inherits from, uh, from a different interface which allows it be, to be calibrated. So there are reasons for, for the two classes, basically because uh, the two classes inherit from, from two different uh, base classes and implement different behavior. But uh, I think this, uh, the, the, the idea might be in the, 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 the correct direction. What we might do in this case uh, might be, well, we might, instead of having a Black Scholes process class, we might have this Black Scholes model class, and this would be the container of the quotes or whatever. That would be the, the I mean, the, it's, a, it's a specific purpose. So it would be okay, for instance, to pass this instance to, to analytic engines or whatever that want uh, specifically the term structures or the market data. At the same time, when we needed a stochastic process, we could uh, ask the model to create one. And this could be made more efficient because, for instance, if we already knew, as in a Monte Carlo simulation, we already know that the time grid that we are going to use for all the paths in the simulation, right? They're all on the same times. So we could pass the time grid to the model and the model could instantiate the progress, the, the process, sorry, pre-calculating the drifts and the diffusion terms at each of those time and pre-calculating them and storing them in the process so that it becomes uh, much more efficient to use it. Uh, we, might just, we might even decide to, to, to add some switches to the, to the, to the, to the factor method. To, for instance, we could uh, trade uh, accuracy for, for efficiency and just say, okay, just give me a, a flat process, flat coefficients uh, from here to the maturity to the, of, the, of the simulation, and I'm going to use those. Anyway, this gives us more leeway to optimize the, the, the process instances in some way, and uh, could uh, and still, uh, 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 well, Black Scholes process at that point would be a legitimate instance of stochastic process, uh, 
we could even fix the other fix the, the other thing that bugs me currently in the Black Shows process, which is that uh, the interface is based uh, on the spot price, but uh, the, uh, the the internal calculation are based and the drift and diffusion terms are based on the logarithm instead, which, for instance, makes the expected value for, of the of the the process uh, the, the the wrong one if you're using if you're just using drift diffusion because you're not going to have uh, the expected spot price but uh, the exponential of the expected log price which is different of course so this could fix uh, some of this uh, of these uh, issues well there are a number of other classes in the library that suffer from uh, from these problems as in the case and for instance one could be the, the, the staying in the Monte Carlo framework, the payoff class, which sometimes is used at the end of the simulation to, to get the, the payoff. Uh, well, basically, the interface is just operator function call, right? In fact, uh, uh, in, uh, in modern C++, we could just do away with this class altogether and just use function, function class. And... Uh, and uh, use that as an, as, a, as an input to the calculation. Well, this one suffers from the same problem. Well, the same, well, the, the, the guilty part is actually the same. The European engine takes a payoff, but well, doesn't use it as a payoff, doesn't call the operator function call. It downcasts it to the drive class and extracts type and strike and does whatever calculation it has to do with types and strikes. So we have not yet another leaky abstraction. Uh, well, this, th there are reasons, of course, for this because it's, it's, uh, you might want to, to, to use different, uh, different formulas or different. I mean, I'm not saying it's just a, a big mistake. It just makes me a bit uneasy to, to, to have this, this lots of casting going around. But anyway, this, uh, there are a number of those classes that could be improved in the library. I'll probably... Um, I, I, I wrote about some of them, for instance, I wrote at length about the shortcomings of lectures process in the... In, uh, in, uh, well, not yet in the blog, in the, in the book drafts uh, I, have, uh, I have available at the, at the blog. In the blog, there are uh, other classes that I'll, I'll write or I've written about. Anyway, there, are, there is uh, ample space for ample possibilities for improvement uh, in the in the library. And finally, bummer number three. This one uh, is uh, one that uh, makes, uh, well, every time uh, it makes me kind of mad. I mean, mm, we, are, we are all, well, probably we're all used to the library, okay? Now, we, we found our way in the library and uh, we no longer think of the, 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 the the, the barrier to the entry that sometimes is, is, is there. Fact is, is a, a novice user comes to the library and expects to price a European option, is going to have to instantiate something like this, which is, uh, well, it's, it's uh, kind, of, kind of insane. I mean, it's, it's uh, one, if you expect to find somewhere if you expect to find the Black Scholes formula somewhere in there, well, it's nowhere inside. It's it's just uh, well, once you instantiate everything, and finally ask the instrument from the NPV, you're going to trigger the calculate method of an analytic European engine that finally is going to co instantiate a black calculator class, and there you have the formula, which, by the way, is written in a fancy way because it's not the usual formula. It's not written as function of the spot price. It's written as function of the forward price, or uh, or the, the discount factor instead of the risk free rate. This kind of variable changes. Well, it's needless to say, I'm not happy about these state of things uh, because uh, it, uh, we are we are not uh, novice friendly, and uh, it's not. Uh, I mean. Some, well, this is one example, but it's not the only one. Sometimes we are losing the underlying model in the forest of uh, objects uh, that we are creating to manage uh, changes to market quotes uh, or uh, whatever it is uh, that we want to manage in uh, portfolios. Well, whatever it is uh, we want to manage uh, 
when we use the library. It's uh, well, this says it all, I think. It's uh, at the base, at, at the core of the library, it's mathematics, okay? It's formulas, it's uh, mathematical models. And it should show, looking at the library, you should be able to, to show, to, to, to see the underlying, the underlying domain. And, uh, well, it's kind of, uh, well, it's kind of a dirty little secret of ours, okay? We are calling it Quantlib. But uh, if you look at how, uh, at if, you, if you actually go and see what a library is in, in uh, software development, uh, it's not really, well, Quantlib, yeah, kind of, uh, but uh, we, mm, we, we're more like a framework, uh, meaning that, well, I'm not proposing to change the name of the thing, it's too late for that, and uh, I like Quantlib much better. Still, uh, if a library is a, uh, a collection of functions that you can uh, use uh, as in taking the function you need and calling it. Uh, we're not really that close to a library. It's more a framework as in some kind of architecture that you have to take as a whole and uh, well you can insert your code into it but uh, it's not like you can take just one bit uh, of, of it and use it. Sometimes you can. You can use the dates uh, or uh, dates calculations and kind of, but uh, you can't just take uh, the underlying mathematical models and use them because uh, they're not there. They're, they are buried into, into this, this object uh, forest. So, well, uh, I mean, I guess my point is that there is really two domains that we are trying to model and we should model. One is, the, as I say, the models, formulas, mm, trees, uh, I mean, this, this kind of mathematical core. And then there is the practice. There is changing market market calls. There is uh, instruments, portfolios, conventions, term structure, bootstrap on uh, something or or other. I would very much like the library to to speak the language of both those domains. So we could have uh, a mathematical core of functions. Uh, well, not. Uh, I mean, we could also have uh, objects. As in, for instance, trees could be could still be objects. But still, they are they are mathematical objects, not uh, not the, the kind of uh, object-oriented architecture we have today. So we could we I, I, I would very much that like the library to have this kind of underlying and accessible domain of of functional function functional core. And then, on top of this, the, the objects, managing market posts or curves, whatever, building on top of the score. It's, uh, right now, the, those two are mixed, and it's uh, very, very seldom possible to, to access directly the, the underlying core. Okay, those were the, the, the three main... Uh, main uh, Things that, 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 that the three main bummers, the three main stinkers in the library, in my opinions. Well, there are, I have good news and bad news about uh, these things. The bad news is uh, I'll never manage uh, with uh, a, a full time job and four kids to, to change uh, all that uh, I want to change. And uh, well, you might have noticed in the, in the, in the past uh, few years. Uh, uh, I, didn't, I didn't do much more than uh, coordinating contributions, merging them into the library. And, uh, so it's, it's uh, not very likely that I'm going to have much time to work on this. The good news is uh, we set up an infrastructure uh, that allows uh, not just us, but uh, any number of people to experiment with the library and, uh, and uh, try new things, prototype changes, uh, and uh, contribute, uh, easily contribute their changes or make uh, them public, uh, share them so that other people can try them out and, and refine the design. So it's, uh, it's, uh, we can use some kind of collective wisdom and experience to refine the design and finally improve uh, the library. Most of it uh, has to do with the fact that uh, we moved to, to GitHub to host the, the, the library. 
we moved it, we we migrated the, the, the code repository from uh, from uh, SourceForge to to GitHub this year earlier this year, and uh, wasn't uh, well in in uh, in hindsight it was an excellent move uh, because uh, uh, it made uh, it made it much more easier to get and uh, merge contributions. Uh, well, this is the, 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 the main repository, the one I have on, on my GitHub account. You can see, well, this is the, the summary of uh, the last month activity. We had a number of pull requests, that is, uh, contribution from other people that uh, forked the library, changed it, and uh, contributed. We had a lot of them, most of them from Peter, which, uh, whose photo you can see there beside, beside mine and uh, well uh, it's, it's uh, much easier to, to, to manage, manage the li it's much, much easier for me to manage the library this way but not only that uh, you can see there is uh, well, well at the time I took this screenshot uh, we had 78 forks uh, of the library that is 78 people made a copy of the repository and started uh, changing it uh, on their own here is the, some part of the sum of those. So those people not only cloned the library to, to use, uh, to, to get the, the, the changes we are publishing on the official one, but, uh, well, you see all the, all the small dots on the, on the tree. They started modifying their library, sometimes contributing back, sometimes just keeping it there for whatever reason. Maybe the changes are still not ready to be contributed or whatever. What I mean is this makes it easier for me to manage the library, but also for people to create and maintain long-lived uh, branches uh, that uh, provide some alternative to the library. So that, for instance, we and, and everybody has access not only to the, to the central repository, the, 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 let's say, official one I'm maintaining, but, for instance, as I said, uh, anyone can, could go and uh, check out uh, Klaus repository that implements the, 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 these this changes related to safety. Anyone can go and uh, right now and uh, check out uh, the Joseph Wines uh, clone that uh, started implementing some uh, OpenMP <laughs> changes that makes it possible to, to easily parallelize on, on multiple cores uh, uh, computations such as loops uh, or, or on tree calculation or I mean, things that can be safely parallelized uh, it's just with, uh, with this OpenMP library is, it's as simple as, uh, as telling the compiler well adding some fragment that tells the compiler okay the, uh, I checked the, all, the, all the, the, the iteration in this loops in this loop are independent so you, just, you can just go ahead and parallelize them and the compiler just does it, and uh, you can see you, you see in, mm, large improvements in, in trees or, or finite differences or whatever. Just as well, anybody could, uh, for instance, try prototyping this complex idea uh, I, I sketched and see what uh, whether it works or not, or what are, are the, the, the stumbling blocks or or whatever. Someone else could try saying, okay, let's see if using C11 we can simplify some of the code. That's possible. I mean, this, each one of these people can uh, do their changes independently. I don't need to, to, to approve those or whatever. They can just make them public. They can even grab each other's changes. So, for instance, they, they can. The, so they, they don't need to pass from the central repository, they just can uh, pull and push uh, changes from, from each other, which is good news, because that means I am no longer the bottleneck in this development. I mean, this, you, you all are, are more free to, to, to go for the library and do whatever changes you, mean, you, mean, uh, you, you need or uh, you, you think are uh, desirable or necessary or whatever. In fact, uh, well, Actually, you could fork the library and start working on it because, well, don't tell me there is nothing that you don't like in the library. But, uh, well, we can uh, talk more about this uh, and, uh, and uh, other things uh, in, the, in tomorrow's discussion. Well, thanks for now. If you have questions, 
I'm here, well, other, otherwise I'll be, I'll be around for the next couple of days. So, thanks.